the motor. So let's say that we have the same kind of stator, but instead of embedding uh, conductors in slots, we wrap them around poles on the stator so that we create magnets, right? So in this case, we're energizing this end and that end to produce a north-south magnetic field. Well, if the rotor is made out of uh, uh, magnetic material, like ferretic material, uh, it will naturally line up along the lines of magnetic flux. That's why, uh, or the path of least reluctance. So uh, that's how these motors work. You, you turn them on and then the bars line up, then you turn on another set of magnetic poles and the bars line up with those and et cetera. So to make the, uh, the internal go around. Now the advantage these have, the previous two kinds of motors, the synchronous motor and the induction motor, they produce something called back EMF. So that the faster they turn, the more voltage is required to, to force current through them. That's not a good thing, right? That, that means that they become less and less efficient as they turn faster. And really what's happening is they're kind of becoming um, less like motors and less more like generators as they spin faster and faster. So they're kind of working, let, let's say we're, they're just kind of working against themselves. Uh, but switch reluctance motors don't have back EMF because they operate on a different principle. So they can be very efficient at very high speeds. Enter this the hybrid motor. Uh, this is the internal permanent magnet synchronous reluctance motor, the IPM SYN RM. Uh, this in desperate need of a better name, but uh, this is this is a kind of the state of the art in uh, in electric motors right now for uh, for automotive. So what we do, we bury the magnets within the, within the uh, rotor. And in doing so, we create, you know, we have the plus here, we have the minus here, we have the plus there, we have the minus there. So this rotor can function as a synchronous motor. Uh, however, we also see that we have bars across here, like there's a solid bar of iron across that way, a solid bar of iron across this way, a solid bar of iron going that way. So it can also function as a switch reluctance motor. So what we can do to get the very high efficiency is at low speeds, we can operate this as a, as a uh, synchronous motor. And then as we go at higher, higher speeds, we can change it so that it's function it's functioning as a switch reluctance motor. This design is shared and they look very similar if you compare a Toyota Prius motor to a, to a Tesla motor, Tesla the car manufacturer. Uh, the only difference is Toyota uses one piece magnets, Tesla uses a four piece magnet. Some people have have uh, speculated that what Tesla is doing is they've broken this up into four pieces because they're they're using a, something called a Hallback array. What's a Hallback array, you may ask? Well, if we take magnets and we orient them in a particular way, here's an example right here, we can produce a strong magnetic field on one side and a weaker magnetic field on the other side. So it's just a very clever arrangement of the magnets to shape the magnetic field. Um, some people speculate that this is what Tesla is doing. Others say, no, they've just sliced it into pieces because they can reduce the amount of eddy current in magnets. Eddy currents produce heat. Heat is not good for, ma for permanent magnets. So we have to see. I, I, you know, people break these down and they and they benchmark the motors, but they don't always have time to do all the exact uh, uh, measurements on them. If we want to compare the three, if we want to compare the induction motor to the synchronous motor to the hybrid motor, um, important indicator is is how much do they cost? Induction motors generally are much cheaper because they don't use the expensive rare earth magnets. Uh, a synchronous motor has a higher cost 
because it has a lot of rare earth magnets around the outside. And usually the hybrid uh, ends up somewhere in the middle because it uses smaller magnets that are in, embedded within it. So the, these are like very heavily mag, magnet dependent and the hybrid is in the middle. If we looked at the efficiency, induction motor is, has very good efficiency. At peak, induction motors can have efficiencies around 95%, uh, 94%, let's call them. Uh, but the synchronous motor is slightly better. Let's call that 96%. And a hybrid motor can be slightly better than that. We could call that 97%. Um, so uh, actually, from an engineering perspective, these are all these are all very close to each other. What's, you know, really, what's the difference between 94% and 96%? That would probably be buried in, uh, in how much rolling losses you have or in how you drive the car. However, you know, these cars have to be marketed. So if this car goes 200 miles on a charge and all things being equal, this car goes 207 miles on a charge, this car wins the marketing war and uh, is more likely to be purchased. Uh, as far as control goes, the induction motor is easy. You know, like there's an electric fan, you plug them into the wall, you turn on the switch and they start spinning around uh, because you don't have the need for synchronization. The synchronous motor is, is more difficult. However, with modern computer control, um, it's still something that's very, very manageable. And then to get the maximum of efficiency out of the hybrid motor, it's necessary to have a more complex um, control, control.